Yeah, what is up YouTube? Today I have with me the Hario Ice Coffee Maker. Now this is a Japanese brand. They make a lot of coffee and tea accessories. I have their coffee pot, which is really nice. It's like a gooseneck coffee pot. Um, highly recommend it on Amazon. This right here is a great way to make iced coffee and that's why I bought it. It's the iced coffee maker, but it's just sold as a coffee brewer. But to me, it's like perfect for iced coffee and it's glass and has a lot of nice features. So I'm gonna review this for you guys. It's gonna be a how-to and a review video kind of in one so you can see if you like it, also how to use it, what I recommend and what it's used for, pros and cons, etc. So first, you have the lid right here. You have the filter and the glass container. That's it, just these three pieces right here. So this product here is a thousand milliliters, but it's only marked up to 800 milliliters, which is interesting. So I guess if you just go to what you assume another inch or so, another notch up is a thousand. What's great about the Hario Ice Coffee Maker is that it's made out of glass, uh, which is something that I really like because a lot of these products are made out of plastic and I didn't really want my coffee sitting in the plastic. One, because it's kind of a health concern nowadays that people think about with plastic, is it BPA free or is it coming off into the liquid? And also just from a taste perspective, if I notice a lot of times in the drip brewers, drip coffee brewers, that you kind of get a taste of that plastic and you just can't get rid of it. And it's something that you notice when you go to a really nice coffee place, it doesn't have that taste. And then when you make coffee at home, it kind of has it. So I went with this product, which is glass. Um, so you have to be careful with it here. When you set it down really hard, you can kind of hear like, it, it definitely hits the, the um, the countertop pretty hard. So you have to be really careful a lot of times. I'll put like a tablecloth down if I know I'm gonna be moving it around a lot and doing a lot of things at once and making the iced coffee. That's just my recommendation. Um, but it is solid in that way and, and it's really nice and it looks pretty cool too and it's nice to serve and it, it looks nice in your fridge when it's filled with coffee. So let's get down to business. I was looking for a way to make iced coffee and I'm sure you might be doing the same thing. If you're looking for this product, you might be like, I need to make some iced coffee or I wanna have some in my house. And let's break that down really quick to what you want to make. Do you want to make iced coffee or do you want to make cold brew concentrated iced coffee? There's kind of two different things. You have iced coffee, then there's cold brew iced coffee, right? Iced coffee is you make coffee, you put it on ice. The coffee melts and it kind of waters down the coffee and then it kind of stinks. That's kind of like what happens at Dunkin' Donuts. I think they do a double coffee recipe and then they pour it over ice, but it ends up not really being that way. It's kind of like, um, they they almost they try to brew it double strength but it comes out like one and a half and then once they ice it it's even less than like a normal cup of coffee i would say because i find dunkin donuts even though i love their iced coffee to be a little bit watery right so then if you make a concentrate it's super dark it's it's more than two times it's like a million times more not really but let's we're just exaggerating here so i bought this to make concentrate and it turns out that this isn't the best way to do it the filter goes on top and then the coffee will go in the filter and then you're able to pour the water on top and the coffee will actually seep to the bottom um, filtered and then you can take the filter out and pour. But the issue with this is if you're trying to make a cold brew concentrate, you actually need so much coffee that this filter isn't large enough to get the amount of coffee you need to make the concentrate. And it would actually be better if the coffee was sitting in the bottom because then more of the coffee would be sitting in the water. Say if you only want this much liquid, only the bottom of the filter is going to be covered with water and to make cold brew concentrate you want it to sit in the water for the entire time so if you want to make an extremely dark or thick or high percentage coffee concentrate then you'd have to make it like an iced tea pitcher and then use this to filter it out this filter is excellent it's one of the the best filters I've ever used, like a reusable filter, usually with like an AeroPress or a Keurig or any kind of other coffee maker, I've had all these different kinds of permanent filters and this is the best one I've ever seen. It's really easy to clean. This is the best function. You actually can just take off the bottom and then shoot water through there like that, which is awesome. Seriously, it's, it's really easy. I'm like, getting excited right now, but if you have made coffee a lot in the past or use reusable filters, you know how bad they suck. And this is the best one. Every design should be like this. And the filter is so fine that it actually does do a great job of filtering out the coffee. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, make our iced coffee. I have some coffee right here. This is a Tanzanian Kilimanjaro blend that I got as a gift. So I'm gonna be using it for this iced coffee. So at this point, I mean, realistically, I probably don't even need a scooper. You can do your own measurements here if you really want to get particular, but 
I'm going to try to make the strongest iced coffee I can make that's possible with this filter. So I'm going to use as much coffee as necessary until this filter is filled up all the way. So normally if you're just trying to make regular iced coffee, you wouldn't want to fill this filter up all of the way. But I like making mine as strong as possible so that when I use ice and milk, it doesn't get watered down. So it's kind of like an in-between a regular iced coffee mixture and a concentrate mixture, but I'd rather be more on the concentrated side. Okay, so now that I have the coffee filled up all the way to the top, you want to leave a little bit of room for water. I'm going to go ahead and put it in on the top of the uh, Hario iced coffee maker now. Like I said, this is the mix between like a concentrate. You can't do a full concentrate with this style of filter being up top, and I just ran out of room. Uh, like I said, it'd be better if it's on the bottom. So I just go as far as I can with the coffee, and now we can add some water. So the ideal way to make cold brew iced coffee is to use cold or room temperature water, probably more towards room temperature. Put it into the Hario and then leave it in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. So this process right here is gonna take a while, unfortunately, because of how much coffee I put in the filter, but the end product will be so much better that it's totally worth it. And then I'll be back with the finished iced coffee. We'll have a little taste, then we'll put it in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours and have some awesome cold brew iced coffee. All right, so as you can see, we're finished. We're above the 800 mark, probably a little over where 1,000 would be, but it doesn't have to be exact. Like I said, we didn't measure here. I'm just trying to make the strongest coffee possible. You want as much of the filter as you can to be engulfed with liquid. I could technically go all the way to the top, but it might just be annoying if you're trying to pour it or move it. It could kind of come up through the top and spill. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. Coffee smells great. If the camera focuses, you can see the wet coffee in there. Some of the top grinds were actually not even ground up all the way. That's fine. I have an automatic grinder and I cut it off early to get some really coarse grinds. You can see when you take the filter out that obviously the coffee level is going to drop and you're going to be more around almost 800 milliliters. But with the filter in here, it's all the way up. This is where we want to have it sit for about 12 to 24 hours. I would pour a glass, but I think I'm okay. I got some coffee grinds on my thumb. One of the best products I've seen for making coffee or iced coffee, like I said, the only issue is that if you wanna make a true concentrate, you have to use like an iced tea pitcher or something and then filter it through this filter. But the filter is great, the glass is nice, very elegant product, looks really great. I don't mind leaving it out on my countertop, which is awesome. And I use it all the time. And then I also take my favorite coffee company, Rook. They have their concentrated uh, containers and I reuse them, fill them up with my own iced coffee concentrate and put them in my fridge. It's awesome and a nice way to recycle. So if you have any of these lying around or if you buy some cold brew concentrate, keep these bottles. If you're in New Jersey or you ever have the chance to try Rook, this is the best coffee in the world. I highly recommend it. So anyways, this is my review of the product. I give it a buy very high rating just unfortunate that you can't have the filter on the bottom but i will take that negative because the product is so great and it's made out of glass and yeah it's very awesome hope you enjoyed the video enjoy your iced coffee peace